My name is Madeline Gupta. I'd like to start by asking you all to take out your cell phones. There's a link behind me. Go ahead and type it into a web browser. The link will take you to a page with two questions on it. Go ahead and answer them. The first question asks you to imagine a room of 100 randomly selected kindergartners in the United States. 100 kindergartners with varying genders, ethnicities, and backgrounds. Out of those 100, how many would you expect to obtain a bachelor's degree? The following question asks you to examine indigenous youth. What if that room was filled with 100 kindergartners that were all Native American? How many would you expect to graduate then? 112 members of the community responded to the same two questions. Their predictions for the first question are projected behind me. Most respondents believed that around 50 of these 100 randomly selected kindergartners would graduate college. According to Sandia National Laboratories, however, only 33 of these kindergartners would in truth graduate college and obtain a bachelor's degree. Well, that is surprising. This is unfortunately only the beginning. Let's take a look at how members around the community responded to the second question. Most people responded that around 45 to 50 of these Native American kindergartners would go on to graduate with a bachelor's degree. However, the real number is lower than 40. The real number is lower than 30, lower than 20, lower than 15. The true value is even lower than 10. That's correct. The percentage of indigenous youth who are expected to graduate with a bachelor's degree isn't even in the double digits. Out of a group of 100 Native American kindergartners, only seven would be expected to graduate and obtain a bachelor's degree. Even more pressing, out of those seven who will have the opportunity to graduate, only two of them are expected to go on to science or math. When it comes to STEM education, Native Americans are continually being left out of the conversation. The few Natives in STEM become obvious even when looking at my own experiences. I have grown up in neighborhoods where strong education in science and math is available to me. This isn't the case for the majority of people of my ethnicity, though. In 11 years of going to school, I have never been in a class where there are other indigenous people. This means that in every math and science class I've attended since kindergarten, I have been the only person of my race in the room. Why now, in the 21st century, are Native Americans still being denied equal career aspirations? Let's take a look at three of the main causes. Number one, the implications of historical and intergenerational trauma. The historical trauma theory states that preceding cultural trauma has a distinct effect on current culture. This means that despite gaining so-called equality in Western society, Native Americans struggle to gain the same advantages, most critically in STEM education, as others have had for centuries.
The continued historical restriction of our people has set us back hundreds of years in the journey to science and mathematics. Poverty and limited resources are often examined as causes of this disparity, but the underlying issue, historical trauma, is seldom considered or addressed. Despite this, it remains one of, if not the most important, aggressive factor. Consistently throughout the past, Native people have been denied access to the same education as our counterparts of other backgrounds. In 1865, President Ulysses S. Grant advocated for the removal of all Native children from their homes and families. He went on to recommend that these displaced children be enrolled in government-run boarding schools where they would be forcibly assimilated into white culture. Indian assimilation schools wrongly convinced many Native youth, at least the ones who survived them, that being indigenous was a shameful thing. It is only very recently that Native people have been recognized and allowed to pursue a range of careers. Despite this recent improvement in status, the violence and brutality of history continues to affect indigenous success today. Due to education being used as a weapon against indigenous people by the American school system of the past, today's generations of Native students are put at a disadvantage in the classroom. Higher degrees still remain out of reach. This brings us to our second cause, a current educational and economic disparity. Even in today's schools, there is little to no cultural relevance for Native American students. Curriculum in the classrooms of America continues to focus on white Anglo-Saxon history, glossing over the events of Native people. The limited representation of their past and present while in school damages the educational experience of Native students. Indigenous children are unable to see positive role models of their ethnicity while in school. Because of this, they grow up disconnected from predominantly Western fields, such as science or mathematics. The continued historical restriction of indigenous people has also prevented them from accumulating the same levels of wealth as other groups. As a result, many are in poverty and unable to access the necessary resources to achieve a STEM career. Even in the rare circumstances where Native children can go on to science or math, more setbacks present themselves within the workplace, bringing us to our third cause, discrimination while at work. In Western America, there are more STEM careers than any other type of job. Part of the reason why Native Americans do not hold an appropriate proportion of these jobs has nothing to do with them personally. Instead, it has everything to do with the color of their skin. As recently as one lifetime ago, discrimination against indigenous people was legal. Even more frightening, it was socially accepted. It is the 21st century, and we are still being sorted by the makeup of our genetics over the composition of our souls. Take a look at the story of How We Echo Hawk, as reported by NPR. Echo Hawk, a member of Oklahoma's Pawnee Nation, formerly wore his hair in a mohawk, as is the culture and tradition of his tribe. After he was told by a job manager to, quote, get a respectable haircut, Echo Hawk cut his hair into a Western style. 
when he had to take time off of work for an injury, he was verbally discriminated against by another manager who complained that this is what happened when Native Americans were allowed in his workplace. Echo Hawk's story is not unique. Indigenous people around the country face racism at their workplaces every day. According to NPR, over one quarter of all Native people believe that they are discriminated against when applying for a job because of their ethnicity. STEM jobs, which are among the highest paying and most successful, are particularly guilty of this. STEM graduates of Native ethnicity who are qualified for a job are liable to be turned down because of his or her cultural background. This is blatantly unfair. Nevertheless, the necessity of STEM fields in Native communities is only becoming higher. The University of Montana recently implemented a program to attempt to address this lack of representation. Dr. Aaron Thomas traveled to several tribal grounds in Montana and created an action plan based on the requests of tribal personnel and students. The result? A summer institute for students on the Blackfeet and Fort Belknap reservations. Students on the reservations were able to get hands-on experience with science and gain new exposure to the subject. 100% of the children involved said that they valued this experience highly. Programs such as the one put into action by Dr. Thomas foster early interest in STEM by children on reservations. This interest is then able to grow and flourish as students get older, making it more likely they will have the ability to choose a career in STEM later on. In spite of the fact that history has denied previous generations of Native Americans from achieving their hopes and dreams of their future in the same way that their white peers have been able to, developments such as the one by Dr. Thomas work to reduce the gap in advantage and level the playing field. Although this is a destructive and pervasive issue, it is not one that is unsolvable. Together, we can work as a collective force to undo what centuries of trauma and oppression has left in its wake. You don't have to pioneer a huge project to make a difference, though. Members of the community, whether Native or not, can help reduce this gap in several small ways. One way is by advocating for local Native men and women in your community. By supporting anti-discrimination efforts, you are helping increase the chance that the Native children of the future will be able to go into predominantly Western fields, such as science or mathematics. At the beginning of my talk, I asked you all to fill out a short survey on your phone. Raise your hand if your prediction for the number of Native students who would obtain a bachelor's degree was close to the actual answer. The fact that so many audience members were unaware of this disparity shows how overlooked Native issues are. Although the lack of Native representation in science is a serious issue, it is seldom regarded as such. Working to change that will not be easy, but it is of utmost necessity that we do. Although we are set years back in the opportunities that have been afforded to us, self-determined Native men and women continue to fight for their rights and for their power to build successful futures for themselves. Being a Native American in science often feels like a game where everyone else has been given a head start. No matter the work and time put in, some have an advantage because history has handed it to them. As an Ojibwe woman in a world 
where Native Americans are continually overlooked when it comes to STEM, I have to fight every day to receive the same opportunities as my peers. This is blatantly unfair. Native voices need to be heard in the conversation concerning STEM. No longer will we stand for being pushed out or interrupted by the voices of those who wish to silence us. We will be heard because we deserve to be heard. Thank you.